Hi everyone, it's Travis here with ProNav Marine, and today we're going to give you an in-depth look at the ProNav Angler mobile application. Our mobile app is really the backbone of the ProNav Angler GPS autopilot system. What it does is it allows you to use your mobile device and turn that into a powerful chart plotter that interfaces with your trolling motor. Within our app, you can control your motor manually using basic controls, but you've also got access to all the advanced GPS autopilot modes, including anchor, heading lock, and point-by-point -point routing. One of the key components of the ProNav Angler mobile app is the mapping system built in, giving you satellite imagery and the ability to add in Navionics map layers so that you can always see where you're at at all times and plot out your course for a successful day of fishing. To begin our video, we're going to start out by showing you where you can get the ProNav Angler mobile application. On today's demonstration, we're using a Samsung tablet. Uh, our device is compatible with Android and iOS devices, and at any point in time, you can refer to the compatibility page on our website to learn more about specific device requirements. On the Android mobile devices, we're going to get the ProNav Angler through the Play Store. Similarly, to get the ProNav Angler mobile application on an Apple device, you'll find it by searching for ProNav Angler on the Apple App Store. Once I get to the App Store, I'm going to do a search for ProNav Angler. Be sure to use the space between ProNav and Angler. As you can see, ProNav Angler is the first app that pops up. We'll select the app and hit install. When installing the ProNav app for the first time, it's a great idea to begin at home where you've got good internet and you've got some time. We don't suggest the first time you install the ProNav Angler app is when you're on your boat. It's always a good idea to make sure you get your device set up and understand how it operates before hitting the water. Once you've installed the ProNav Angler application, you can find the app icon in your app tray, or as you can see, I've already got it on my home screen. We'll select the icon, and the first time we open the app, you'll see our new version release notes, a user agreement, and a short video. Once you've proceeded through these, click OK. When you open the ProNav Angler app, the first screen is called your home screen. From here, I've got access to all the manual controls for my trolling motor, including a left-right button, a prop on-off icon, and a plus and minus to adjust my motor thrust or speed. On the top, I've got a status display bar, which reads out my speed in miles per hour, the status of your ProNav system and trolling motor, and the thrust set point or speed set point. On the bottom bar, I've got my connection button, my live map view icon, my three GPS modes, anchor, heading lock, and routes, a speed and thrust set point, a start stop button, and a mark waypoint icon. On the top left, I can access the main menu for the ProNav Angler app, which shows me a variety of options and features that we'll discuss further in this video. Once we return to the ProNav Angler application, I'm going to select the Bluetooth Connect button in the bottom left corner of the screen to connect to my device. Here you'll see the serial number associated with your ProNav unit. I'm going to select that, and now my phone or tablet is going to pair uniquely to that device. Once I have established a connection with the unit, you'll see this icon turns blue and says connected. On the top status bar, I can see that my system is reverted, which means that currently it is not doing anything. Now that I've established a connection with my trolling motor, I can use my manual control pad to steer the motor adjust the speed, and turn the prop on and off. As you can see with the propeller icon, when I select that icon and turn on the trolling motor prop, the button will turn green to let you know that your trolling motor is active. To turn the prop off, I can simply press the icon again or press stop in the bottom of the screen. The next thing we'll cover is the ProNav Angler main menu. As you can see in our main menu, the first option we have here is My Account. The ProNav Angler application allows you to create a unique account where all of your route and waypoint data 
is securely stored in the ProNav cloud. Using an account will allow you to sync your data between one device and another, meaning if you own multiple phones or tablets and wish to use those all for controlling the ProNav unit, each one can be synced so that the waypoints created on one appear on the other. To create a ProNav account, I'm going to select the My Account icon. I'll select the Register button on the right-hand side of the screen. Once I've provided an email and a password meeting our requirements for security purposes, we will select Register. Once your account has been registered, you can simply log in by providing an email and password. If for some reason you forget your username and password, at any point by hiding the keyboard, I can use the Reset Password button at the bottom of the screen. Please note this button is occasionally covered by your device's keyboard, so if you hide the keyboard, which on an Android device can be done just by using the return arrow, I can select this button to request a password reset. Once I log in, the data that I have saved on this device is now stored and securely backed up in the ProNav cloud. If I haven't used this device before and I wish to sync my data from another device that's already saved in the cloud, I can hit the Sync Data Now button, which will pull in routes, waypoints, and any other saved information into this device, which can be used and viewed in the mapping and routing functions. Any of the data that I have saved on another device can now be used and displayed on this device. Once I've logged into my account, I'll just simply hit the back arrow, and you can see we're back on our home screen. The next feature in the ProNav Angler main menu is Calibrate. The calibration function is intended to calibrate the ProNav GPS unit specifically to your trolling motor. By selecting Calibrate, we'll see the next menu here, which prompts me step by step through the calibration process. We have another YouTube video which is available online or through our website that covers in depth the calibration routine, when to calibrate, why to calibrate, and how to go through this process. So we won't show you the details in this video, but you can refer to that if you have any questions. The next menu feature is Control Settings. The Control Settings menu is a lesser known functionality of the ProNav system that actually allows you to tailor the system performance to your style of fishing and to your boat. What I mean by that is that with the ProNav Angler GPS Autopilot, the control algorithms that it uses to position your boat can be modified using these preset modes in order to create different performance. For instance, if my primary style of fishing is casting by following very precise shorelines, structures, docks, etc., I'm going to use the casting mode which in the routing function will hold the bow of my boat and the trolling motor very closely to the course or the route that I'm following as opposed to allowing it to wander off to one side or another. The trolling mode acts in a similar manner but slightly different in that the trolling mode is designed to allow your boat to track the course and the route that you have set but will allow the boat to have a little more air to the control line which accommodates smoother turning from one point to the next. For instance, if I'm trolling planer boards, I'm going to use the fast troll mode so that as I transition from one waypoint to the next in my route, my turns are going to be nice and smooth, preventing lines from getting tangled. The real trade-off here is in how tight the front of your boat is going to follow the route that you have set and displayed on your screen. So if I really want the boat to follow that line closely, I'm going to use the casting setting. If I really want the boat to follow that course nice and smooth because I'm trolling, I'm going to use one of the trolling settings. And just note that we have slightly different gains if you plan to troll slow at less than a mile and a half per hour or fast at greater than a mile and a half per hour. Each of these settings can be used by simply selecting that setting and hitting update settings. If at any point you wish to restore your device back to the factory preset settings, simply hit Reset All to Defaults. The next icon here is the Revert to Pedal button. This function actually operates very similar to the Stop button. 
This button will simply stop whatever your trolling motor and ProNav system is currently doing and put it to an off state. Next down the list, we have a link to the ProNav website. We have a tutorials menu. At any point when you have either Wi-Fi or mobile data to your device, you can access the tutorials page and watch videos covering installation, firmware updates, and many other functions of the ProNav Angler system. If you're out on the water and have a quick question, this can be a great way to get up to speed quickly on the functions that you're looking to learn more about. The same tutorial videos are also available on YouTube or on the pronamarine.com website. As we recommend to all of our customers, it's usually best to watch these tutorials at home when you have time and get familiar with the system before the first time when you head out to the water. Doing so will ensure your first time out is a success. The next function is a very important function of our mobile app, and that's the firmware upgrade screen. I'm going to select this button, and at this point, my app is going to bring me into the firmware update dialog. Firmware updates are periodically released by ProNav in order to make changes to the performance of the ProNav system, improvements, and expand on functionality. It's very important that when you're going to perform a firmware update on your ProNav device, you take the time to do this when you're not out on the water. One important note on the firmware upgrade process is that it will take some time to complete. Typically, we suggest you give yourself at least 10 to 15 minutes to go through this process from start to finish. And it's also very important to note that if you start the firmware update process for any reason, it's absolutely critical to complete the firmware update or else your ProNav device will not be usable until you do so. Firmware updates are always optional meaning you can continue to use the ProNav system without the update until you get home. We typically suggest you do the firmware updates when you're home at your garage, you have a good connection to internet or mobile data, and you can spend some time going through this process to make sure it's successful. Built into the app, we have a tutorial video specifically covering how to update the firmware on the ProNav app and on the ProNav device. Please watch this video and refer to it if you have any questions at any point throughout the firmware update process. If you have any issues with the firmware update process, the first step is to typically try the update a second time and to see if it will successfully complete through the process. If that doesn't solve the trouble you're having, please contact ProNav Marine and we'll help you out. After firmware upgrades, you can see we have a unit diagnostics button if you select this, the unit diagnostics will provide us with some information that we can use to help troubleshoot any issues you're experiencing with your ProNav device. If you're talking to one of our tech support team and they request a unit's diagnostic report, please access this page and hit the top button to send the diagnostics directly to ProNav Marine support. Finally, we have a disconnect button here. Similar to the connect icon that we first used to connect the app to the ProNav device, we will use the disconnect button to disconnect the app from the ProNav device. As you can see here, the Bluetooth icon in the bottom left has turned from blue to gray, meaning that that connection has been terminated. Next we'll cover the home screen status bars, one at the top and one at the bottom, and explain the features built into each. The status bar on the top of the screen will always read out your current motor settings, reverted, meaning it's not doing anything currently, my current speed in miles per hour, and the thrust setting for the motor. On the bottom bar, I've got my GPS mode icons, my thrust or speed setting, the stop function, a mark waypoint function, and a button to get me to my live map view. At any point from the home screen, I can simply press on one of my GPS modes to accomplish that function. Here you can see the anchor mode is active, turning the prop on, and the thrust will automatically adjust to maintain your position. Next to the anchor, we've got our heading lock modes and routes. On the bottom here, I can see my thrust setting. By selecting this button, I can set my thrust point from 0 to 100. When I'm in the vector mode or route mode, 
I also have the option of setting a cruise control. Similarly to the thrust setting, I'll either set a percentage thrust or I'll use the slider to set a target miles per hour speed. Please note on the speed control function that we limit this functionality to speeds greater than 0.8 miles per hour in order to provide proper performance. To send a thrust or to send a speed, simply drag the slider to your desired point and hit send. The next part of this video will dive into the functionalities associated with mapping. By selecting the live view icon, I can now see my live view screen. To find your position on the map at any point in time, you can select the blue position icon in the bottom right corner and it will zoom in to your current location. Note when I am connected to my ProNav device, the GPS positioning rendered on the map actually comes from the ProNav system itself. When I am not connected to the ProNav system, the GPS positioning in the map view will actually come from your mobile device GPS. The first feature we'll cover on the live map view is our tools menu. Within our tools and options menu, I can first change the map type from the default street view to satellite imagery, terrain, offline saved maps, or Navionics maps. We'll select satellite and compare. A little bit later, we'll cover offline saved maps and Navionics maps. The next function is to download a map area. Downloading a map area saves out an area of imagery for offline use. At any point in time, to download a map area will require either Wi-Fi or mobile data connection so that your device can pull in the new maps and save them on the device. Once a map area is saved on the device, it can be viewed offline without any mobile data or Wi-Fi connection. It's very important that if you're fishing a new body of water or an area where you know you will not have cell service, that you download map areas ahead of time, save them on your device, so that when you get out on the lake and on the water, you'll be able to see your position on the map. To download a map area, I'll select the icon. The first step is to cache the map for offline use by providing a name. I'll call this map one. The next bar here is to indicate the number of layers that the map will save. As you can see, the save map layers ranges from two to six. And what that means is the higher the number, the more detail that this will save on your device for offline use. By selecting a number of layers of six, I'm going to save the maximum number of mapping layers so that as I zoom in on my map when I'm offline, I can see more and more detail to the maximum amount available at six layers. If I'm just saving a large area so that I can simply see my position on the map and areas that I don't necessarily need the full amount of detail, I'll use a lower number such as two or three to save out less map layers. For this example, we'll use three, we'll hit OK. And as you can see now, with the Wi-Fi connection available here, we are saving the map and downloading the data. This process will go faster when you save less layers, and it will go longer and take a little more time if you're going to download the maximum map layers available. In order to view the offline map that I just created, instead of using the satellite map type, I'm going to switch to my offline map type. To see the saved map, you can zoom out and then zoom back in. And you'll see as I zoom in, I'm actually viewing different layers of satellite imagery at each level of detail. If we zoom all the way in, this is the maximum amount of detail currently available based on the number of layers that I have saved. When I'm going back online, or if I have a data connection available, I'll simply use the satellite layer. And as you can see here, I can continue to zoom in and get even more detail.
Under the download map area is a manage saved apps option. This option simply allows you to view saved maps that you have loaded into your device and delete them or remove them from memory if you no longer need them. The next option in the menu is the tracking mode. By toggling tracking mode off and back on, I'm telling this device that I would like my trail saved as I fish throughout the day. Tracking will display on the map what we call breadcrumbs, essentially creating a trail anywhere that your boat has been throughout the day. One of the advanced options available under tracking is to create a route from your tracks, meaning if I've fished a shoreline or a piece of structure and I've created a trail around that structure, either manually as I'm driving around or I have fished through there on a route, for instance, I can use create route from tracks in order to go back to the GPS trail that was created and select individual points out of that trail to create a new route. The track color option allows you to change the color of the tracks. Depending on which map layer you're using, you may find a different color stands out a little easier and is easier to see. The next option is the track length and spacing. As you can see in the top here, we have track spacing set to normal by default. If I wish to change this, I can go to extremely sparse and it will save tracks every once in a while, let's say you know every 100 yards versus if I go to very dense, now my tracks will save every 10 feet. The next setting here is to show tracks from the last period of time. By changing the track duration, this changes which tracks are displayed from the most recent ones to ones that were created previously. If I wish to go back and see where I was fishing a couple weeks ago, I can increase the amount of days and set that, which will turn on additional tracks that are saved on this device. If I only want to see the tracks that I created today, I will change the track spacing to one day, set that, and now I'll only be able to see the tracks that are most relevant to the day I'm fishing. To delete tracks, I simply hit the delete tracks button here, which will erase all the tracks that have been saved on this device. Tracks don't require a lot of data or space on your device to save, so deleting tracks is simply a way to clean out tracks that you just no longer need uh, however, by doing so, it will fully clear the history of tracks that you have created. So be sure if you have tracks that you wish to convert into a route, that you create those routes prior to deleting out tracks. And last, we have the distance tool option, which places a distance tool on the map. By toggling this, as you can see here, I now have a distance tool that can be dragged on the screen, indicating my total distance between points. To view the Navionics mapping layer and see the one foot depth contours on each of your body's water that you fish, we're going to change the map type to Navionics. The first time I select the Navionics map layer type, I'm going to be prompted to enter my Navionics login. This login information is going to be something that you create directly with Navionics by downloading the Navionics boating app, creating an account and selecting a subscription option for their maps and lakes that fits your needs. Once I've already created a Navionics login, I will enter that same login on this device in order to sync those charts in the ProNav Angler app. Once I've logged into my Navionics subscription in the ProNav app, I can now see all the subscriptions that I have available with my Navionics account. As you can see, I've subscribed to the US and Canada version of the Navionics boating app, which gives me one foot contours for all the body's water in Canada and the United States. Once I've logged in and I can see my subscriptions, please make sure you have at least one active subscription with Navionics. As you can see, USA has zero days left. If all of your subscriptions indicate that you have zero days left, this means you do not currently have an active Navionics subscription that will work inside of the ProNav app. If you don't currently have any subscriptions available, please take a step back, get the Navionics app installed on your device, and be sure to subscribe to one of their plans, which start at $14.99 a year for the entire United States. Once I've logged into Navionics, I'll hit Done, 
And now you can see I've got my Navionics layer active. And as I zoom in to the map area, it will start to automatically download and save in the details to that area I've zoomed into. This will download automatically as long as your device has either a Wi-Fi or mobile data connection. Once the area is downloaded, it will turn from the darker screen to the light screen, just like it did. And now you can see I've got my Navionics contour lines available directly inside of the ProNav Angler app. And when I zoom out, you can see that region that is automatically saved in the ProNav app is the light colored region. I can zoom into anywhere in this region and view the detailed contour lines available. One of the great features of the ProNav and Navionics integration is the ability to toggle back and forth from Navionics imagery to satellite imagery. Where this can be really useful, for instance, is fishing in areas that have shallow water that either are not mapped very well or where you can see detail on the satellite imagery that isn't readily available in the Navionics charts. To toggle back and forth from Navionics to satellite, simply go to your tools menu, map type, and now I'm going to select satellite. And you can see the satellite imagery is loaded in the exact same reference and orientation as the Navionics imagery that I was just viewing. Where this comes in real handy is if you're fishing in areas that have very well-defined structure. As you can see here, we've got some really nice rocky points uh, which have channels and cuts and deeper water in between them. And oftentimes, this type of detail simply isn't captured in the Navionics map layer. So again, to toggle back to Navionics, We'll switch back to that map layer and you can see the same maps in the same location. If I'm creating a route on the map, for instance, you can see how I'm creating my waypoints directly along this drop off. Let's take a look and see as we zoom in here how that looks over the satellite imagery. As you can see here on the satellite imagery, we can clearly see this drop off that we just created our route along. You may notice there's a couple points along this drop off that actually appear a slightly shallower and slightly different than what the Navionics maps have shown. In order to take advantage of the satellite and Navionics information, I can simply drag some of these waypoints and just adjust them slightly so that my boat's going to be following exactly where I want it. One of the other features of the live map view is the position location button in the bottom right corner of the screen. By selecting this location icon, the map will automatically zoom to my current position. If I select this icon again, the map will automatically lock so that as my position changes, my boat icon will stay in the center of the screen. By hitting this icon again, I've locked my map orientation to my current boat's heading. To rotate the map at any time, you can take two fingers and simply rotate the map by twisting. Another feature in the satellite view is to take two fingers and drag from the bottom of your screen towards the top to put your map into perspective view, which as you can see, gives you a nice 3D look at this river channel system. To return to my normal orientation, simply drag from top to bottom with two fingers or select the blue button on the bottom right corner. It will again lock the map orientation to your current heading. As you can see in the live map view, at any point in time, I can return to my home screen by pressing the home icon in the bottom right corner. Similarly, from the home screen, I can return to the live map view by pressing that same icon. On my live map view, you can see I continue to have my status display at the top, reading out a speed in miles per hour, the current status of the trolling motor and ProNav system, and the thrust setting that that motor is set at. The bottom bar also contains the same information with my speed or thrust set point, my stop button, my mark waypoint button, 
and our GPS modes. There's some differences on the GPS mode buttons between the home screen and the map screen and that on the home screen a single short press on the anchor icon simply locks your current location whereas on our live map screen hitting the anchor icon brings up a anchor menu allowing you to create an anchor point on the map, anchor at your current location similar to your home screen button, import a waypoint or view all of your saved waypoints on the map. One of the advanced features of the mapping capabilities is that I can create a waypoint on the map and bring my boat to that point to either anchor or as you'll see in a moment, create a route. Our current location is on shore in the ProNav office and if I have my boat here and wish to proceed out into the channel, I can select a waypoint by simply clicking on the screen. Once I've created my anchor point, I'll verify that it's safe to proceed from my current location to that point across water. And if I think that's safe to do, I'll hit the go button in the bottom right corner of the screen, which will turn my motor on and bring me directly to this point, at which point the motor will go into its anchor mode and hold me right at the end of this drop off. If I just wish to anchor in my current location, we'll use anchor here. And the import anchor feature allows you to pull in a saved set of coordinates, which can be brought in in either a KMZ or KML file format type. The last option here is to view and hide all points. If I have saved marks or if I have created waypoints and anchor points on the map, I can use this to toggle through these save points and view them in the map. I can also select a save point and navigate directly to it. As you can see here, I've created an anchor point at the end of this drop off. If this is a point that I wish to save so that I can use it again, I'll simply hit the save icon in the top menu bar and give it a name. To create a new anchor point, I'll simply create another by doing the same process of pressing and holding on the map where I want this point saved. To save this anchor point, once again, we'll hit save, give it a name. And press save. Similarly, at any point in time, I can mark my current location by hitting mark point. Mark was placed, long press mark to see the mark list. So by coming into the anchor, I can view and hide all points. Now that I have a few points saved, by pressing view and hide all, I've removed them from the screen. By pressing view and hide all again, you can see they are showing in a sort of ghost color on the screen. At any point in time, I can select one of these marks through the menu. So I can select point two and you can see it turns it dark gray. I can also use the arrows at the top menu bar where it says point two. There's a left and right arrow. This will actually toggle between those saved points that I have created. So to toggle the to point one, you can see if I zoom in on it, it's this first point we created. If I wish to navigate directly to point one from my current location, I'll once again press go. If I wish to edit or delete any of my save points, I can do so using the menu here. You can see the visibility is shown. If I change the visibility, this turns my points to hidden. Once again, I can turn them to shown. To delete a point, I simply hit the trash can icon and it will ask if I am sure I want to delete this point. To edit a point, simply hit the pencil icon and you can zoom into that point on the map. I can change its location by clicking on the map to send it to a new location. And through the three dots in the top right corner, I can also rename this point to give it something more descriptive. Once I'm done editing my point, simply hit the save icon 
and it will give you the option to update the existing point or to save it as a new point. As you can see here, we now have the updated waypoint saved. The next feature that you can do through the map screen or the home screen is called vectoring, which is essentially a heading lock for your trolling motor. When I select vector from the map screen, you'll see I have a few different options. The first option is to create a vector on the map similar to how I've created an anchor point. By pressing and holding anywhere on the screen, a vector or a heading lock is drawn on the screen from my current location to where I've pressed. When I hit go, my boat will automatically follow this line on the screen. Once it gets to the end, it will continue to follow in a straight line beyond that heading. At any point, I can update the heading lock by simply pressing elsewhere on the screen. If I simply want to create a straight line from my current location to a far off boat ramp, I can do so by selecting that ramp and now when I hit go, my boat will follow a straight line from point A to point B. When I hit go, I've got the option to set either a thrust or a speed, and my controlling motor will automatically make the adjustments from there. From the vector menu, I also have the option to create a GPS vector by simply pressing the icon and setting a speed or thrust. When I press the GPS vector icon, it's going to use the heading that my trolling motor is currently pointing to establish that direction. As you can see, once I have set a vector and hit go, my current vector heading is displayed by an orange line. To clear the heading lock that I was creating on the map view, simply press the X in the top right corner. Also from the vector menu, you can switch back and forth between a GPS heading lock and a compass heading lock. Similarly to GPS, the compass heading lock will lock my motor's current heading using compass to keep the motor always pointing in the same direction as opposed to following the straight line across the bottom of the lake. Lastly, and possibly one of our favorite functions of the ProNav Angler is the ability to create routes and follow point by point from one to the next. I'll select the routes icon, which asks if I'd like to create on the map, import a route, and then gives me the option to view and hide all of the saved routes. To create a route on the map, simply click the icon and begin creating waypoints along your desired path. Create a waypoint, just press and hold on the screen until you feel that screen vibrate. It's very important to note as you're creating waypoints, don't drag your screen as you're pressing and holding or it will not create a point. So I'm just going to simply press and hold and these waypoints will be created as I go. Just keep in mind that your boat's always going to head to that first point and then continue. In this example, the boat's going to head due south and then take approximately a 90 degree turn to proceed to the second point. Generally speaking, before I hit go to start this route, you're going to want to make sure that you've either positioned your boat and started a course towards that first point, or don't start setting lines until you've reached that first point and you know where your boat's heading from there. Once you hit go and your route is active, your segments of each route point will be orange until they're completed and then turn gray. Keep in mind, if you wish to modify any of these route points at some point while you're running the route, you first have to save this route. And then I can modify these points using the edit icon, select the point I wish to modify, and hit save. In this case, I will update the existing route. And now, when I press go, a second time, it will send the new points for the route. If I wish to start my route from any of these points between my designated start point and end point, I can simply navigate to that point, and using the route point options, I can set that point as my starting point, 
and you can see my boat will only complete the green point and those highlighted to the checkered flag. The points that it will not complete are transparent. If I wish to flip this, I can simply hit the flip option up here, which will change the direction my boat traverses this segment of course from one end to the other. Similarly, in the satellite view, I can select any point and set as my start point. And use the flip option to change which way I'll be heading along that route segment. If at any point I wish to toggle back and forth from Navionics to satellite, I always have that option even during the route creation process. And as you can see, I've got my same waypoints over my satellite image. With respect to each of the endpoint conditions, just keep in mind a few of these basic things. If I've selected to anchor at the end of my route, as soon as your boat gets to that final point, it's going to stop and your anchor lock is going to take over. If you're trolling and intend to continue on so that you have some time to recover your lines, a vector ending would actually be preferable as your boat will continue straight beyond that final point and give you some time to pull lines in. If I hit stop, my trolling motor is simply going to turn off and at that point my boat will drift with the wind or current or prevailing conditions. Currently at this time there's a slight difference in editing waypoints between the satellite view and the Navionics view. If I wish to edit a waypoint in the satellite view, simply click the waypoint and hold until you feel it vibrate again and now I can drag this point and let go of it anywhere on the screen. In the Navionics view, the route point creation and editing is slightly different. As you can see here, I've got a point selector in the bottom left corner of the screen. By using these arrows, I'm toggling this white point from one to the next. If I wish to edit this point, I'm going to hit select, which turns it black and gives me the option to press and hold anywhere on the screen and create a new location. So as you noted in the satellite view, you can drag a point in the Navionics view, you're going to press and hold to create a new point. If I wish to delete that point, I can simply hit delete selected point. If I wish to create a new point, I will release the selected point and continue creating new points. Under the point options menu, I have the option to select a point as a starting point set it as an ending point or to remove a point. Another option in the routes creation at any point in time is to flip your route so that your starting point becomes your end point. To do so, I'm going to use the flipping arrows up in the top right corner of the screen which changes the start point and the end point. Starting point is always indicated by a green icon and the end point is always indicated by either a white or checkered flag icon. To save this route, simply press the save icon in the top right hand corner of the screen and give it a name. To create a new route, I can come back into my route creation menu and I can hit create a map once again. As you can see here, I'm going to create a second route and save it. And now when I come back to my routes menu, I can see my multiple saved routes. By clicking on one, it will show me where that route is on the map and select it as the active route. And by hitting the toggle arrows in the top bar of the screen, I can actually toggle back and forth between my saved routes. If I wish to edit a saved route or delete a saved route, I can do so through the routes menu. Delete is the trash can icon and edit is the pencil icon. If I wish to edit this route, I can start to move some points to new locations. And again at the top bar, I have the option to save or rename my route. Once I save, it's going to give me the option to 
save this route and update the existing one, or to save this route as a completely new route. If I choose to do that, I can give it a new name. One of the nice features of being able to save a copy of a route is create variations of the same route and allow you to cover the same area but in a slightly different path each time. By saving a copy as I just did, I would have the option to offset this route and essentially not have to troll back through the exact same water that I've just fished. It's going to give me the option to save this route and update the existing one, or to save this route as a completely new route. If I choose to do that, I can give it a new name. And by selecting the visibility for all of my routes, I can now see the two variations of routes that I have created over top of each other using the same route that I started with to create those variations. When I'm done viewing routes, I'll just select hide all to clear my screen. So as you guys have questions or comments, please get in touch with us. Send us your feedback through email to support at pronammarine.com and we will get back in touch with you and, and follow up on any of your questions, comments, or feedback. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon.